These recipes may start with a box cake mix, but they are delicious. I love doctoring up a box of cake mix. And besides, y'all are loving these videos, so as long as y'all are loving them, I'm gonna keep them coming. Hey y'all, I'm Valerie, and welcome to my kitchen. In today's video, I'm sharing six delicious recipes using boxed cake mix. Okay y'all, let's get started. This strawberry pie cake is one you really need to try. To begin, in a large bowl, I'm adding one box of strawberry cake mix, and you do wanna make sure it's the 15.25 ounce box. I stick with Duncan Hines, Pillsbury's good too though. And here's where it gets fun. You're gonna add in a 21 ounce can of strawberry pie filling. Yes, I know it sounds crazy, but just trust me. By the way, I've decided to start a box cake mix series. I think this will be the fourth episode. So be on the lookout for many, many more. And to that cake mix and pie filling, I'm adding one fourth cup of milk, two eggs, and about a teaspoon of vanilla. Then you're just gonna mix this until it's very well combined. Okay, the batter is gonna be pretty thick. You'll need a nine by 13 baking dish or a pan. And we don't want this cake to stick, so just make sure you spray it with some kind of nonstick spray. And y'all know my favorite is this Baker's Joy. And now you're just gonna pour in that strawberry cake batter. And y'all, this stuff smells absolutely amazing. I can totally understand why it's called a strawberry pie cake. Now this goes into the oven to bake at 350 for 25 to 35 minutes or until a toothpick inserted comes out clean. When it's done, you'll wanna let it sit out on the counter to completely cool then we can start on the frosting. And for that, over on the stove top, in a medium sized saucepan, I added five tablespoons of butter, one third cup of milk, and one cup of granulated sugar. You're gonna bring this mixture to a bowl and whisk constantly while you let it continue to boil for two minutes. Remove it from the heat, then you're gonna add in one cup of white chocolate chips. If you don't like white chocolate chips, you could also do semi-sweet chocolate chips. Just work quickly and whisk it until it's completely smooth. Now we're taking that frosting over to the counter and you're gonna pour it over that completely cooled strawberry cake. I found it was easier to spread with an offset spatula just to keep it from going down into the sides. And it did set up pretty quickly. And of course, I had to sprinkle some more white chocolate chips on top just to add a little something extra. This cake was so delicious. It would be perfect for the summertime, any kind of cookout or potluck you're going to. It's great to make for church. It's definitely one of those crowd pleasers and I loved it even more because it was so easy to make. It was a little more of a denser cake and that frosting was amazing. This sweet potato honey bun cake is one I'll be making all year long. I'm starting out by making the filling for the middle of this cake. In a medium sized bowl, I added one cup of brown sugar, about a tablespoon of cinnamon, about a fourth of a teaspoon of nutmeg, and one third cup of chopped pecans, or pecans, however you wanna say it. You'll just wanna stir this until combined and then set it aside. We'll need it here shortly. Now to get started on the cake, in a large bowl, I'm adding one butter golden cake mix. You can also do yellow. You're also gonna add one cup of sour cream. This does not make it taste like sour cream. It just adds in a lot of moisture. Next, add in one cup of mashed sweet potatoes. I actually put mine in the food processor and pureed them until they were smooth. Then you're gonna add four eggs, three fourths cup of oil, and about a teaspoon of vanilla. I decided to add in a little cinnamon to this also. I just love cinnamon though. Now you're gonna mix this all until it's completely and well combined. I'm gonna make this in a nine by 13 baking dish. 
and you definitely want to spray this one with nonstick spray. We do not want this thing to stick. Okay, for this, you're going to pour in half of that sweet potato batter. Just spread it out and it will be kind of thin. And I felt like I didn't add quite half of that batter in there, so I spread a little more. You just want to make sure that bottom is completely covered. And remember that filling we made up just a little bit ago? You're going to take that and sprinkle it all over that first layer of cake. And yes, I know it looks like a lot, but don't hold back. I'm telling you, sprinkle it all. And y'all, by the way, I've already started on my next box cake mix video. I just made something with an orange cake. It was so good. Y'all are not going to want to miss that one. Okay, after you get that filling all on there, you do want to spread it out and make sure it covers that entire cake. Then on top of that, you're going to drizzle over the other half of that cake batter. And it works out much better if you drizzle it over and then use an offset spatula to kind of spread it out. I just tried my best not to get that filling mixed into that top layer. I am going to swirl it together a little bit, but I didn't want it to be completely mixed in. So after I got it spread out, I just used my knife to kind of do a little swirls here and there. And this don't have to be done in any certain way, just swirl it around a little bit. Now this cake goes into the oven to bake at 350 for 40 to 45 minutes, or until a toothpick comes out clean. After it was done, I did let it sit for a little bit. It does fall after it sits but then I set it to the side to make up the glaze. In a small bowl, I added one cup of powdered sugar along with three or four tablespoons of milk. And you're just gonna whisk this until it's completely smooth. I decided to throw in a splash of vanilla here. And you know, I have never made the original honey bun cake. That's one I gotta add to my list. Have y'all made the original one? If you have, let me know how you like it. Okay, now you're gonna take that glaze and pour it all over the top of that cake. And if you feel like this is too much glaze, you can always cut it in half. And I haven't tried it yet, but I'm sure this would work out with a powdered sugar substitute. I've had a few of you to ask about sugar-free things, and I do know that Pillsbury makes a really good sugar-free cake mix. So you could definitely try one of those. Now just spread that out to completely cover the top of that cake. This was so good, and y'all know I shared some of this with my daddy, and he loved it. And if you're not a fan of the pecans, you can definitely leave them out. You can swap them out for walnuts. Oh, and I did want to mention, when you first make this cake, it does kind of fall apart a little bit, but after it sits for a while, it really kind of sets up. And this had my house smelling amazing. And as you can see, at this point, half of that cake was already gone. We all immediately dug in and it was gone in no time. Now this lemon earthquake cake is a new family favorite. First, I'm gonna start by making the cream cheese filling that goes over the top of the cake. In a medium sized bowl, I added eight ounces of softened cream cheese, along with two and a half cups of powdered sugar and one stick of melted butter. I also added a teaspoon of vanilla and just a pinch of salt. While I'm thinking about it, do y'all do a lot of cookouts and barbecues when the weather gets warm? I was just curious if y'all would like to see those kinds of recipes. Kind of like potluck recipes. So let me know if y'all want to see some of those. Okay, now I'm just mixing that cream cheese, butter, and sugar mixture together until it's smooth and creamy. Then set it to the side. We'll need it here shortly. Now in a large bowl, I'm adding one box of lemon cake mix. And you do wanna make sure it's the 15.25 ounce box. And we are gonna make this according to the directions on the back of the box. The water, eggs, and oil, but I always do milk instead of water and add an extra egg. And this was not in the recipe, but I threw in about a tablespoon of lemon zest. And I'm telling you, that just took this cake to a whole new level. If you're a lemon lover, which I know I have a lot of lemon lovers out there, y'all are gonna love this one. Now just mix all that together until it's well combined. Now you're gonna grab a nine by 13 baking dish. 
And we're going to do something a little different here. On the bottom of that baking dish, you're going to sprinkle over about a half a cup of chopped macadamia nuts. Just make sure you get them in there kind of evenly. Now over the top of those, we're going to sprinkle one cup of shredded sweetened coconut. By the way, if you're new, I would really love to have you here. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. That way you get notified of all my future videos. Okay, and over the top of those macadamia nuts and shredded coconut, you're going to pour that lemon cake batter. Try to spread it out into an even layer, but just be really, really careful not to move everything around on the bottom. And now you're going to want to grab that cream cheese sugar mixture we made up earlier. I'm using my cookie scoop to do this, but you can also just use a spoon. I'm just making little dollops all over the top of that cake batter. I think it works out better if you do a lot of little dollops instead of just a few big old scoopfuls. And after you get it all on there, you're just going to use a butter knife or anything really to just kind of swirl that cream cheese mixture into that cake batter. And we're not mixing it until well combined here. Just give it a little swirl. Now over the top of that, you're going to sprinkle about a cup full of white chocolate chips. And feel free to use as many as you like. I probably did a little more than a cup full. Okay, now this is going into the oven to bake at 350 for 55 to 60 minutes. And yes, I know that seems like a long time, but if you feel like the top is starting to get a little golden brown, a little too golden brown, which is what happened to me, I did halfway through or about three quarters of the way through. I covered it with a layer of foil. That way the top don't burn before the cake gets done. This cake may not look like anything special, but it was absolutely delicious. This was packed full of lemon flavor. And I think it's the perfect dessert for spring. Who else is ready for the warm weather? I know I am. Oh, and the shredded coconut and chopped macadamia nuts that were on the bottom gave this the perfect little crunch. And the gooiness from the cream cheese made it amazing. This chocolate overload cake is exactly as the name describes. I'm starting out in a large bowl. I added in one chocolate cake mix. You do want to make sure it's a 15.25 ounce box. And we're not going to follow the directions on the back. Just add in that dry cake mix, along with two small boxes of chocolate instant pudding mix. And this just, besides adding flavor, helps it to make it a little more dense, more like a pound cake. You're also going to add five eggs, one cup of milk, and three-fourths cup of oil. By the way, I always have the full recipes either linked or typed out in the description box below, just in case you miss anything. Now I'm adding in half a cup of sour cream. Okay, you can completely skip this step if you want to, but here I have one teaspoon of instant coffee dissolved in one tablespoon of hot water. That coffee flavor just takes that chocolate over the top. And now you're just going to mix this until it's very well combined. And the batter should be very, very thick. Okay, and now we're about to add even more chocolate into this cake. I have half a cup of mini semi-sweet chocolate chips that I've tossed with one tablespoon of all-purpose flour. That way they don't all sink to the bottom of the cake. And I'm just folding these in until they're combined. I'm sure you can make this in a 9x13 baking dish, but I'm doing mine in a bunt pan. Mine's a Wilton 9.5 inch, and I did grease mine with Crisco, and I sprayed it with my Baker's Joy nonstick spray. You can really see how thick this batter is. You're just going to add it in there and spread it out evenly. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It'll even out as it bakes. Now this is going into a preheated 325 degree oven for one hour or until a toothpick inserted comes out clean. Now this cake does rise a lot. 
So to be on the safe side, I would place a baking sheet under it as it bakes, just in case it overflows a little bit. I let it cool for about 10 minutes in the pan and it will fall a little bit. I was a little nervous about this one coming out, so I did take my knife and run it around the outside edges and around the center, just to try to help it come out a little better. Then you just place your cake plate on top and flip it over and hope for the best. I did give it a little tap just to make sure it came out. And it turned out perfect. I let this sit here and cool completely before I started on the chocolate ganache for the topping. If you wanted to, you could just dust this with some powdered sugar or cocoa powder and call it a day, but I had to make that ganache topping. When it was completely cool, I set it to the side. In a large measuring cup, I have one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. And to that, I poured over half a cup of heavy cream. Then I placed it in the microwave in 30 second intervals until it was completely melted. It may not look completely melted, but just give it a good stir. And if it's smooth, you're good to go. I had to get my cake situated first. It was a little wopsided on the plate there. Now I'm just slowly drizzling over that chocolate ganache. And I'm telling you, you don't wanna skip this, just trust me. Besides, it's so easy to do and it makes it look like it came right out of the bakery. And after I got it all drizzled on there, I had to add some more chocolate chips. You'll just wanna add these before that chocolate has time to set up. That way they have something to stick to. This cake is a chocolate lover's dream. Ask my daughter. Lacey loved it. She is a chocoholic. I have a Hershey's icebox pie I'm supposed to be making for her soon. So I'll be sure to share that one with you too. This was so good. It was so chocolatey and rich. And you really can't go wrong with chocolate. And I love this because it's easy to make. It looks extra fancy and all the ingredients in it, I already have on hand. It doesn't have any crazy things in it that make you have to run to the store to get everything. It's simple and easy to make and my family loved it. I'm pretty sure yours is gonna love it too. When I seen this peach potluck cake, I knew I had to try it. I'm starting a little bit different for this recipe. In a large bowl, I'm adding three eggs. You do wanna make sure these are room temperature and you're just gonna beat them until they are fluffy, I guess. The recipe says to just beat the eggs. Now to those eggs, you're gonna add one box of yellow cake mix. And since this was peach, I did have to add a little sprinkle of cinnamon in there. Now we're gonna add in one can of peach pie filling. And if you wanted to, you could change this out to do any other kind of pie filling you like. Apple would be good. I just stuck my knife down into that can there and tried to cut the peaches up. That way there weren't really big chunks of peaches in there. And we're just adding it right into that cake mix there. You could also do this with strawberry or even cherry pie filling. And of course, I didn't follow the directions here. The recipe said to stir it, but I already had my mixer out from beating those eggs. So I just mixed it until combined. Now I'm gonna grab my nine by 13 baking dish and of course I sprayed it with nonstick spray. Now you can go ahead and pour in that peach cake batter. Then just spread it out into an even layer. And y'all, if you love peaches, you're definitely gonna love this one. Now this goes into the oven to bake at 350 for 30 to 35 minutes or until a toothpick inserted comes out clean. And the recipe does say don't underbake this or the center will fall. But I think this one turned out perfect. When it's completely cool, we can start on the topping. I've got a large bowl here. I'm adding one box of instant vanilla pudding mix and that's a 3.4 ounce box. I'm also adding one cup of milk and I just used 
and it says this was optional, but I added one fourth teaspoon of almond extract. If you don't like almond extract, you can do vanilla. And just mix it until it starts to thicken. And I did scrape the ball down just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Now we're going to fold in an 8 ounce tub of thawed whip topping. You'll have to let me know what's your favorite dessert to make in the spring and summertime. My favorite would have to be my daddy's cherry cream cheese pie. And you do want to fold this in, that way that topping stays light and fluffy. Now you're going to grab that cake and we're going to spread it all over the top. Now you can leave this just like it is, but I crushed up some graham crackers and sprinkled those over the top. This turned out delicious. Now y'all know how much Lacey loves chocolate. She's a chocoholic. She loved this cake. It really surprised me. I mean, we all loved it, but she tends to just stick to the chocolate. And the peach flavor in here was just perfect. And that topping, that topping is what made it. It's a perfect dessert for a potluck, a cookout, or any kind of family gathering. We loved these chocolate Butterfinger butter bars. To make them, you'll need a large bowl. I'm adding in one box of dark chocolate fudge cake mix, but any kind of chocolate cake mix will do. Next, in a measuring cup, I melted down six tablespoons of butter along with three tablespoons of peanut butter. I added that in and also added two eggs. This is gonna be the bottom layer, the crust, so just mix it until it's combined. I'm using my 9 by 13 baking pan and someone had mentioned that it looks small and I promise you it is a 9 by 13. And I have mine lined with full and a piece of parchment paper just to make it easier to lift the bars out of the pan when they're done. And I did reserve about a half a cup of that crust dough. That way I had something to crumble over the top, over the filling layer. Then you're going to take the rest of that crust and you're going to spread it out and press it down until it completely covers the bottom of that pan. And it's easier if you kind of break it apart and spread it out and then press it down. Okay, after you get that all pressed down in there, you're going to set it to the side while we make up a cheesecake, a butterfingery, butterscotchy filling layer. And yes, I used that same bowl that I used to make the crust because I was not going to dirty up another bowl. I added an eight ounce block of softened cream cheese along with one small box of instant butterscotch pudding mix, two cups of powdered sugar, two eggs, and six tablespoons of melted butter. Now mix it until it's very well combined and that cream cheese is completely incorporated. I used about six of these little fun size Butterfinger bars. I added them to a Ziploc bag and crushed them with my rolling pin and then I added them in. Then you're just going to give this one last mix until it's combined. Now you're going to take that filling and pour it all over the top of that crust. Now just spread it out nice and even in there. Here's that half a cup of reserved crust mixture and I'm just kind of breaking it up and evenly sprinkling it over the top of all that filling. Now this is going into the oven to bake at 350 
for 20 to 25 minutes or until that filling is set. And here it is out of the oven. We have just a couple more things we're going to add onto the top. I'm sprinkling over about six more crushed fun size Butterfinger bars, or you could also use those Heath toffee bits. I'm also sprinkling over about a half a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips and about a fourth of a cup of butterscotch chips. Now this is going back into the oven only for about two or three minutes just to give it enough time for those chocolate chips and butterscotch chips on top to melt to where they stick to the top. You'll want to let these completely cool before you cut them into bars. These were so good. This was a complete experiment, but they turned out amazing and I'm so glad they did. That chocolatey crust on the bottom and that filling cream cheese layer was gooey and fudgy. I wouldn't change a thing about these bars. And because of the cream cheese, you do want to make sure you store them in the refrigerator. But they were delicious. Definitely something I'll be making again. I love to experiment, especially when things turn out as good as these did. I really hope you enjoyed this video. You may also like these. Don't forget to subscribe down below for more easy recipes, and I will see you in the next one.